All right, so in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about naming ionic compounds. And to name an ionic compound, what you're going to do is you're going to name the cation first, that's usually a metal, and the anion second. Uh, most ionic compounds contain metals. There are some that don't, but uh, in general, ionic uh, compounds contain metals. In fact, if you're ever looking at a chemical formula and you want to decide, you know, is this, is this ionic or is this covalent, generally if you see a metal in the formula anywhere, uh, that's going to tip you off that the compound is ionic instead of covalent. So let's talk about binary ionic compounds. Bi binary ionic compounds are the ones that have only two different elements in them. So for binary ionic compounds, the anion is going to end with the suffix IDE. And also, for a metal that forms more than one type of cation, a Roman numeral is used to indicate which ion, which cation that metal forms. So an example would be Fe2 plus versus Fe3 plus. Fe2 plus, we call that iron 2. Notice that we have a Roman numeral in parentheses. That's the notation that we use. And also iron 3 plus, we call that iron in a Roman numeral 3 in parentheses. So with that in mind, let's uh, do an example, a couple of examples, uh, naming a couple of these things. So here we go. Here we have KCl. What is, what's the name of this? What is this stuff? Well, if we look at our cation, looks like we have the potassium ion, K+. And if we look at our anion, it looks like our anion is going to be Cl-. So we have K+, and Cl minus, and we can, we're going to call that potassium chloride. Remember, for binary ionic compounds, the, the anion is always going to have the suffix IDE attached to whatever the root word of the element is. So that one was pretty easy. Let's go on to another one. Li2O. How do we name this? Well, uh, again, this is also one of those binary ionic compounds. There's only two different types of elements in here. It looks like we have the lithium plus ion, Li plus, and it looks like we have the oxide ion, O2 minus. Notice that there are two lithium atoms to uh, cancel out this negative two charge that the oxygen brings. So the name for this we would call it lithium oxide. Notice that we do not attach any kind of prefix on uh, lithium. We, um, we don't need to do that. This is not uh, one of those situations where we would add a prefix. Um, you know, just because there's more than one of these atoms in the compound, you know, we don't name it any differently. It's still lithium oxide. So let's move on to another one. NaNO3. Well, this is no longer a binary ionic compound. This, uh, this compound now has a polyatomic ion in it. So let's first identify what's our cation and what's our anion. Looks to me like this sodium ion is going to be our cation, and this stuff, NO3, is going to be our anion. And this is one of those common polyatomic ions. This is actually called the nitrate ion, and that is NO3 negative. And sodium is going to be just good old Na+. Therefore, we we're going to call this stuff Sodium nitrate. So cation first, then anion. Sodium nitrate. Um, just uh, another thing is that uh, these metals that I've chosen so far, potassium, lithium, uh, and sodium, uh, these are all group 1A metals. So 
group 1A metals actually don't form more than one different type of cation. And this is why we do not use a Roman numeral in this case. So there are actually several more metals that do not form, that only form one different type of cation. In fact, 1A metals, 2A metals, aluminum, zinc, silver, and scandium all form only one type of cation. So anytime you have an ionic compound with any of these in there, uh, the Roman numeral is unnecessary. You do not include the Roman numeral. So let's do another example. NH4 in parentheses, subscript 2, CO3. Well, this one might be a little difficult to someone who's never worked with these before because I mean, there are no metals in this thing, yet it is an ionic compound. And it turns out that NH4 plus is going to be our cation, and CO3, 2 negative, is going to be our anion. So sometimes it just takes practice to, um, you know, sort of, you know, figure out what's your cation and what's your anion. There's no specific method on how to find that. Uh, this one over here, this NH4 plus, is called the ammonium ion, and the CO3 two negative is actually called the carbonate ion. So, based on that, we would call this thing ammonium carbonate. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, let's do one more. PV3, PO4, for in parentheses, subscript 2. So there's a lot going on in this one. Um, PB is the symbol for lead, and lead is actually a metal that forms more than one different type of cation. So this could be, you know, lead 2, lead 3, lead 4. I mean, you know, lead has more than one different type of charge. You can think of it that way. So... Okay, well, generally when it comes to these metals that form more, more than one different type of cation, what I like to do is I like to start with the anion first and sort of work my way uh, backward, if you will. Well, the anion in this compound is going to be the phosphate ion, which is PO4, 3 minus. And, well, it looks like there are two of them. So it looks like our anion, our two anions, our two phosphate ions, are going to sum up to a total charge of negative 6. So that means that whatever we have on the cation side, that's going to have to sort of negate this negative 6 charge because this whole thing doesn't have a charge. So whatever the, the charges have to add up to the net charge on the entire compound. So that means that our cation, this is going to have to account for positive 6. This is going to have to sum up, the charges on this are going to have to sum up to positive 6 in order to sort of counterbalance this negative 6 from these phosphate ions. And it looks like there are three of them, three lead atoms. So if we divide 6 by 3, that gives us a charge of 2. And therefore, we're going to call this stuff lead to phosphate. All right, so hope this video helps, and uh, good luck naming these things. Uh, you should eventually, you want to be comfortable enough doing these that you go back and forth between uh, formulas, chemical formulas, and names. So anyway, good luck.